For the dust collection strata, I'm going to use this strata bushing which came with the router when I bought it. And to increase the growing area, I'm going to make a wooden ring to grow on top of the bushing. I've already cut out the hole on the plywood and now I just have to cut it out with the bandsaw. But since no teachers were around at that moment, I couldn't use any of the machinery so I had to use a coping saw. It didn't need to be very precise because I could just use the disc sander to clean it up. To help glue the plywood to the metal, I'm using a steel brush to roughen it out, but it wasn't very effective so I changed to a hacksaw. I'm using epoxy for this and hopefully it will be strong enough. Plan of attack is to first make the wood flush with the metal ring, and then mount it like so, and then take the guts out the middle, and then I'll reverse draw it to create an offset in the wood. Parting the middle part off created a very sharp noise because the cutter had the lower surface area being in contact. The middle piece broke off and stopped the lathe because the motor isn't powerful enough. For turning the inside part, I had to change the lathe to go in reverse to prevent the tool holder from hitting the chuck and then reverse drawing it to create the step in the plywood. Very epic fail, the plywood kind of just came apart all by itself and the epoxy held on and ripped the wood off so now I might try some different materials, this time without layers like this piece of old acrylic and PVC So I glued those two different materials to some scrap bits of metal with some epoxy and then I can do a break test First up was acrylic, at first I was even worried that it might bend the metal too much but as it turns out that wasn't a concern at all, it broke at a mere 60 grams. And then it was PVC which I didn't really expect much at all and sure enough it broke at a weak 10 grams. Well as you can see, gluing another piece with epoxy to metal isn't really that strong. So instead I'm going to do what I really should have done from the beginning, which is to remove the ring out from an entire piece of metal. So I started by cutting it down with a cold saw. Just must be on the limit of the Just. And now I can draw out the center for a bolt to come through, which will be used for the truck to grab onto the workpiece. Despite the noise complaints, I cut the corners off using an angle grinder. By grabbing hold of the bolt head, I started turning it down on the lathe. I never thought that my first turning experience would be on a metal working lathe instead of a woodworking lathe, and I couldn't help but do a J bait. Very lucky. Okay. The idea is you keep taking cuts to get the depth pretty right. Yeah. And then effectively with the last one, um, we go a little bit further and come out to square out the corner. Right. Okay. While Mr. Mills is dealing with the kids in the shed, I am turning the step just like on the previous one. This took days to turn, mainly because I only had lunch time to do it, but the lovely metal shavings coming off gave me the motivation to keep going. So I just got this back from the lathe and let's see how it compares with the original one. What the? When you're just so perfect that even your mistakes are perfect. I turned the outer diameter to be what's supposed to be the inner diameter. Well, luckily they have another piece of solid steel that I can turn from. Finally on the third try, I've got this turned correctly and to the correct dimensions. I even had a little bit of drama over here where I didn't have enough material on it. So I had to weld a little bit more metal on it and now I can take the guts out of it. Once again, I'm switching the lathe to reverse for the inside cut. This also took quite a while because there was a lot of material to be removed.
So after quite a bit of turning, I finally got this to look like a ring. And for the plastic shroud, I'm going to use this piece of plastic that I got from a table cover. To attach this, I don't actually want to use glue because it's going to be really messy if I damage it and try to remove it. So instead, I'm going to drill two holes on the side and tap them for bolts to go through. Hmm, seems like the plastic isn't strong enough to return to its position after it's been bent. So instead I'm going to give this plastic bottle a try. This plastic is much better but I think it has overperformed because now I can't actually get it to spread out when I push it down. So now what I want to do is to make a bend at the end like that and hopefully that will help it spread out. I'm not sure whether this plastic is actually bendable so I'm going to try out with a little bit of scrap. And because I don't have a heat gun, I'm going to use the hair dryer. Yep, that seemed to work. I forgot to press record when bending the plastic, so here's the final product. And I think I can bend the plastic strips even a little bit more. Alright, so after quite a bit of work, I finally got this done, and now it works like a treat. I actually even had to make a new one because I stretched the first one too hard and that just broke in the middle. Right now, I want to add another screw on this end because when I squeeze this, that end actually comes up. Like the other two holes, I'm just going to eyeball this. So that absolutely wrecked the dust shroud and now I'm going to test out cutting a mortise and let's see how we go with that. Before taking a closer look on the dust shroud, let's see whether the mortise and tenons fit. And of course they don't fit. Thank you for one of the viewers for commenting to give me the idea to check the router bit size by cutting a straight line like a mortise. And now I can see instead of being 12.0, the router bit is actually 12.5. If my router bit was half a millimeter larger, then my tenon should be half a millimeter smaller as well. And as expected, so the error I was getting wasn't actually from the pentagraph mechanism because that multiplies across a distance. And if it's a constant error, then it must be something to do with the router bit or the template or even the ball bearing. By cutting a straight line using this template, I effectively take out the template and the bearing being one of the variables, which leaves this Chinese made router bit being the only source of error that I'll have. Anyways, back to the dust collection hood. As you can see, it's not actually quite festal standard. But I think we're getting there. In theory, this works pretty well because when I press the piece of wood against it, it fans out the plastic and then effectively keeping the plastic away from the router bit. But however, I did not consider the situation where I'll be enter into the wood like this and then that pushes the plastic into the router bit and then effectively destroying it. Well, it took me a while to figure out what was wrong and I actually found my solution in this CNC router. The solution is simple. The trick is to not have the brushes touch the router bit at all. So how do I implement that into this? Well, you simply can't because this is already as big as it can go. 
So instead, I'm going to ditch this idea and then remake a base plate for the router that also allows me to fit in these plastic bristles around. So after some work in CAD, I designed this new dust shroud. It is basically a new router plate that has a narrow circular slot cut in the center of it to accept the plastic shroud. And the diameter of the circular slot is big enough so that the plastic bristles can't touch the router bit even when it's bent over. I chose to use acrylic because I wanted to test some new materials and also the laser cutter is able to produce much higher results with this material. Here I am setting up the laser cutter to the correct height in relation to the workpiece. This is achieved by moving the workpiece to the nozzle until the metal piece on on the right of the nozzle displays movement and then it was as simple as pressing the print button but that part came much later a week of setup time was done behind the scene for this to work properly the main problem was that for some reason the laser cutter software just wasn't able to pick up any circles in my drawing and since the router plate consists largely of circles it wasn't able to pick up any lines so i had to draw everything by hand in illustrator which really sucked but the cutting process took no time at all, I'll say 3 minutes max. Here I am peeling off the paper to glue the layers together. And then I can cut out the new plastic shroud, this time using an old folder cover. After test fitting everything, I feel confident enough to use acrylic cement to glue everything together. I took out the plastic shroud after about 30 minutes for the glue to firm up, because I wanted to glue that separately so that I can put more glue in. Try fitting the plastic shroud again to make sure it still fits and it kind of worked. Some spots were tighter than others but it was manageable. For this dust hood I don't think it's necessary to bend over the ends to help it flange outwards because no matter which way these bristles go they still can't touch the route of it. I think the grooves in the plastic shroud naturally makes it easier for the glue to grab hold of it. The epoxy did make the joints a little tighter, but I managed to get it in anyways. After the glue had firmed up, I can take off the paper to prevent it from being permanently bonded to the dust round. Before taking it to school, I countersunk the holes. Is it okay if I make a test cut on my own machine? Yeah. Okay. Well, not exactly festival standard, but luckily I put in the description that aim high, hit low. Or else I'll get so many critics right now. Anyway, so at least I don't have dust all over my face. And that's the start. So let's see whether the modest and tenants fit because I made a new template follower that is two mil bigger than the last one. So the tenants should be one mil bigger. So surprise, surprise, somehow doesn't fit, but fits in the old one. And after checking the router, I actually found that the router bit is loose. And I'm kind of lucky that it didn't fly out and just suddenly kill me. So, to be continued. But first, let's see whether the new dust route allows easy access to changing the router bit. There we go. 
as you could probably notice there's quite a bit of chips accumulating at the bottom of the shroud and a lot more at the bottom but I get almost none on the floor and I mean maybe a little on the table as well so I might even build some kind of shroud underneath and that might help the dust collection a little bit but I'll probably do that sometime in the future because right now I really want to just start using the machine